Door handle. The movie is supposed to evolve into this kind of nightmare situation and really the basement is kind of like their hell almost. And immediately when we started doing it, I said, you know what, why don't we shoot this all with flashlights? Got it! And it was very powerful to just see rooms lit by flashlights and, and then absolute darkness. And when the lights go out in the theater and you just hear everybody gasp, is such a great thing, you know. I'm taking away everything that they can feel safe about. And when we shot the asthma attack, we were getting crushed by our schedule. We were supposed to be in the basement for a full week and we were, we were running out of time. And, and everybody's getting instructions and it's like totally wartime. And it was one of those moments. And we just sat down in the dark in this basement and we had a half hour to shoot this whole asthma attack. Don't be afraid, Morgan. We'll slow this down together. And Mel just kind of exposed this very dark side when he says, I hate you. It's the first time he actually acknowledges that there's something up there. And the way he acknowledges it is through hate. I hate you. The rhythm of the speech was kind of like driving, and, and then it would, uh, and it would come in, in bursts, and it was sort of to himself. And it, was, and it was not repetitive, but using the same words in different ways, meaning different things. The fear is feeding him. Don't be afraid of what's happening. Believe it's going to pass. Believe it. Just wait. Don't be afraid. That's his first step towards faith, is, was saying, acknowledging that it's there. You know, I'm pretending you weren't there for the whole movie, you know, but that's a lie. Okay, I'm lying about that, but you're there, but I hate, that's not a lie, I hate you. And he gets through this nightmare with his child and then the uh, uh, you know there's he's a different person you know uh, at the end of this i think that he's faced his, his in a way he's facing his nightmares one at a time um, well okay that's that's a, a visual alien right right it was just whether or not there'd be a reaction to his hands right to hitting the alien and my right. contention was no i'd rather see the blur of this shot, and then a clean swing as though he came across his yeah. chin. You wouldn't see a reaction. No. And it looks the scene about Faith is really about seeing something that's not there because there wasn't anything there for them to see. Action. And so there was a real kind of going into new place with these actors and everything. And this was just a really, really tricky thing to do when nothing's there. Come across the lens as much as you can. It's a part of acting. I mean, it's a, it's just another element um, that you must have in your arsenal of tricks as an actor. You know, you need a lot of help um, with your imagination. Can you help help me out, help me picture this. What is what is this going to look like, and, and where is it going to be positioned? So my reaction, you know, does this make sense? This is how I imagined it, and and it is difficult, but I have a, a pretty good sense. Of, of ultimately how uh, it will look. Hey, take one. I tried to shoot, uh, you know, as much yeah. as I can in sequence without getting it? crazy with the costs, you know. And in this movie, it naturally lent itself to that because it was mostly the outdoor stuff was early. Then we went into the house. So once we were in the house, we just shot in sequence in the house. The only thing that was out of sequence was the end scene outside in the backyard, which we had to shoot maybe at the halfway point of the movie. Um, so that was, a, that was, you know, tough. I wish I didn't have to, but by the time we got to it, if we waited, it would have been winter outside. And so we wanted to do it in a kind of a way that was kinetic and real and not in the movie. I wanted to shake you up. So we left kind of the, 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 the orchestrated shots and went to a handheld shot outside, which made you feel like, hey, even in the slightest way, is this not going to work out for us? Don't touch him. Give him a minute. Uh, that moment of what it feels like to feel his epiphany, you know, when, when you hear the boy say, Dad? We pan to Joaquin and, and the girl, it goes into a tiny bit of slow motion, like they're feeling this rush of a miracle. Um, and it's just, it's just those little things, I think, that, that make you feel, you know, what the characters are feeling. Can someone save me? <laughs> I think someone did. I saw this kind of Norman Rockwell opening and closing of, you know, the, the perfect backyard with the swing and the, you know, the crops in the corner and everything's perfect, American ideal. And that at the end of the movie, the American ideal has changed a little because it's shattered glass, but it's still beautiful. As we pan around the room, 
to make it one shot and all of a sudden it's snowing in the other windows and then we go to the bathroom door where we saw him come out in the beginning and he comes out in his priest outfit and I don't want him to say anything, I just want him to get dressed and walk out and that would be the last moment and it was really powerful, it was the last shot that we did and it's the last take that we did that's in the movie and of course it's take number six, that number has particular significance to me. <laughs> and Gates good! Yeah. This is the rare occasion that the script really held its form as it was written. And, you know, the movie will have a pedigree of emotion. It will have been born of the right things, of the right motivations of faith and love and true moments of all of us. That everybody came to the movie and gave a little piece of their lives and their heart. It's a wonderful little EKG of, of all of our emotions. and. Um, I can't wait to see how it all came together and then see the reaction of the audience, you know?